the tournament. They might have been in the tournament, but but, but this is a, this is an important early season game that's going to come back and play a part once the selection committee makes its seating. So so it's imperative that they, that they they come out and win this basketball game. All right, we're just still actually here we come. We've got the teams coming back on the floor now for introductions, and we're closing in on the tip off of game two in our stadium shootout. So stay with us, BYU and Arizona State, straight ahead. Mike and I have been together a long, long time. It sounds corny, but it's kind of a dream came true. I grew up in Dorchester. I used to come to the Garden. We each have a viewpoint. Most often, of course, mine is right. We have had a chance for the last uh, 28 years now to sit on the sidelines, get the best seat in the house. We're like a back in the old garden way back when. Well, the two of us really enjoyed a broadcast. I love that shot! It's like sitting in the... New England better than Gary Tangway and Michael Felger on Mohegan Sun Sports tonight. All-time leading receiver Troy Brown joins us every week. Plus, we catch up with Patriots linebacker Mike Vrabel every Friday. They didn't say that much last year um, at our game here, you know, probably for good reason. And our cast of experts are second to none. Mohegan Sun Sports Tonight, covering the Patriots weeknights at 6.30 and 10 p.m. Only on Comcast Sportsnet. Whether it's before the tip-off or after the final buzzer, Comcast Sportsnet has you covered before and after every Celtics game all season long. They get it. They know where each other is going to be. With the most expert analysis. He plays hard. He's in the gym. He works very hard in practice. And inside info. He's going to have to have surgery on that. No one covers the green better than Comcast Sportsnet. Pre and post game live, before and after every game. Only on Comcast Sportsnet. Network of champions. This is the place for me to be. I'm going to finish here and be you know, one of the best players in, for, for Boston. It was the story that captivated baseball throughout the summer. We were building toward this over seven and a half seasons. If they want me to come back next year, I'll come back. If not, I'm a free agent. Manny being Manny, the final days in Boston. It's a shameful way that Manny left town. Premieres Christmas night at 8 p.m. Only on Comcast Sportsnet. The stadium shootout at Glendale, Arizona. BYU making the trip. And uh, the BYU football fans are not here. They're in Las Vegas because their football team's playing the bowl game today against Arizona. But for BYU basketball, bringing a 10 0 record to play Arizona State. Starting lineup, you see the experience. Sophomore guards, juniors up front. Tavernari, a very good shooter. Chris Miles, their big man, but it all revolves around the multi talented Lee Kamar. Yeah, the offense kind of revolves through him, but, but again, Jimmer Fredette does a great job on the push. And then Tavernari is, is a bulk three point shooter, and the closer he is to the line, the higher his percentage goes. He's one of those guys that, that, that has a limited range, so he likes to cast a long jump shot. Now Dave Rose, twice. The Mountain West Conference Coach of the Year. This has just been a tremendous. In fact, the number that really jumps out at BYU, they've won 53 straight games in Provo at the yep. Marriott Center. Protecting the home court to the extreme. And Dave Rose has done a great job of establishing, once again, BYU is a tough place to come in and get a W if you're the opposition. Now, last year, Jeff Pendergraft was. Uh, a veteran playing with a lot of babies out there and now those babies are starting to grow up you see sophomores and a junior and Derek Glasser and and, uh, and Jeff Pendergraf talked to us a little bit about that yesterday about how the, this team is matured and as with it comes more expectation yeah and we talked about James Hardy you know about him but these other two guys Ty Abbott now if the Pac-10 didn't have as, as many talented freshmen as it, as it had last year and OJ Mayo and Kevin Love and, and guys like that I mean he uh, uh, Jared Bayless he would have gotten a lot more attention he, he played about 34 minutes it's a game, so it gives you an idea how much confidence Herb Sendek, their fine coach for Arizona State, has in, in Ty Abbott. 16th year as a head coach for Herb Sendek, his third year in ASU, and of course, again, part of the Tubby Smith school, the uh, Rick Pitino school, rather, in the pedigree. It's a true, been a, like a little reunion for these uh, three coaches here in this trip to Glendale, Arizona. School's out for ASU, and that's part of the reason why uh, the tennis isn't what everyone hoped it would be today, but there are still some diehard Sun Devil fans in the house. But it's interesting, of the three coaches that coach together, the three that are here on the staff, Patino, Tubby, Smith, Herb Sindek. Herb Sindek's style with that kind of deliberate Princeton offense, a lot of zone defense, is as far away from as Rick Patino as anybody, Billy Donovan or a lot of the coaches right. that, that have yeah. coached for him, coached with him. 
Well, Herb Sendek, and, and we talked about this in game one. If you're just joining us, Herb Sendek, an assistant with Rick Pitino at Providence, and then he went with him to Kentucky, where Tubby Smith then was hired and joined that staff. It also featured Billy Donovan and Ralph Willard, and an all-star staff of coaches almost 20 years ago. And so Herb Sendek had a chance to reflect with us on his memories of working alongside Tubby Smith. Always fond of talking about is our early morning pickup games. You know, we'd play basketball at 5:30 in the morning before the workday started, and uh, Tubby always made sure he he had already had about a gallon of coffee, so that he was juiced up and ready to go at 5:30. So he'd come in and he'd be touching the rims or grabbing the rims if he could, and and raring to go. All right, <laughs> the great point. You know what he said, though, Marcus? Who do you think called all the fouls in the game? Patino. Rick Patino. He said, Let none of guess. us could ever call a foul. Coach Patino, yeah. he called all the fouls. Hey, my program, <laughs> I'm calling the fouls. That's, right. That's okay. some coaching staff, isn't it? Yeah, it is indeed. And the Billy Donovan, with all the success he's had in Florida, got the national championship for Sunday. The way he's turned around his Arizona State program over the last couple of years. Five straight NCAA tournaments at North Carolina State between 2002 and 2006. All right, meanwhile, on the other side, we have a returning Arizona Player of the Year coming back to his home state to play. It's BYU's Lee Kamard, and with more on him, Jody Jackson. Well, that's right, Ted. Lee Kamard, interesting story. Their best player for the Cougars, he was almost an ASU Sun Devil. Of course, he grew up in Mesa, Arizona, went to Mesa High. They won the state championship in 2004. Said he went to plenty of ASU football and basketball games growing up. He was recruited, of course, under the Rob Evans staff. Russ Pennell, who is now the U of A head coach, with Lute Olsen, of course, stepping down. The reality is that he had almost decided to go to ASU. Things just didn't work out. He loved uh, Russ Pennell and decided at the last minute after another trip to Provo, Utah, that he loved it up there at BYU. And it's ended up to be a great place for him and his family. And of course, it's a terrific, um, a terrific player to fit into the system where they like to push the ball. A very versatile player. He can score from anywhere on the floor. And he's got this BYU team at 10 and 0 right now, guys. Hey, look at him, Marcus and uh, Lee Kamard. You know, it's the old story. If you saw him in the airport, you wouldn't be impressed. But you put a basketball in his hand and sneakers on his feet, and this young man can play. A little slide up build. I mean, 6'7, 190, 195. But here he is at Mesa High School, leading them to a state championship in 2004. And this just kind of exemplifies how he plays the game. Expect him to be on the floor, diving for loose balls, attacking the basket with aggression. And, what a thrill to, to come away your senior year with the with the big golden ball. Oh, wow. Guess he's got some family in the house, huh? He said he let the coaches take care of all the ticket requests. He, he didn't want to have that distraction. But uh, it was a, it was an exciting mention to us numerous times how excited he was to finally come back and play a game in his home area. And talking to Dave Rose, the uh, Yesterday at practice, and he said as a freshman they played Lee Kamard a lot. Started him because he was just a you know, good all-around talent. Sophomore, he was their defensive stopper on the perimeter, and with the emergence of Jackson Emery as a defensive stopper this year, he's more of their offensive guy. So his roles have been evolved in the past three years. Lee Kamard. So Arizona State. They're in their home whites with the ball. That is James Harden. Jackson Emery, gets, as Marcus said, gets the initial assignment here. Jimmer Fredette at BYU on Derek Lasser. Well, well, right away, Jeff Pendergraf, he's got to be licking his chops because he's not going to be double teamed on the inside. They're going to play him straight up man to man. He's got to try and take advantage of that. Cook six on the drive, lost it. Turnover to BYU. Ball movement. Watching BYU, I mean, this is a team that had a 61-point half at home the last week against Boise State. And they can score quick, and they just move the ball beautifully. I think 45 of those in the first 8 to 10 minutes of that second half against Boise State. Of course, Arizona State renowned for its defensive shutdown, but not there as Kamard stepped inside of Harden. Great presence of mind that the first pass deflected by Harden, which means dribble live, and Lee Kamar took advantage of it. And then the overplay, Emery with a steal. And it's four quick ones, BYU. And then a quick timeout, ASU. And you better wake up and don't sleep on this BYU Cougar defense. We talked about Jackson Emery's defensive assignment. You heard Dave Rose say it, make 
James Harden play at a fast speed that he's comfortable in. Jackson Emery is the guy to do that. He's their most aggressive guy in terms of just trying to steal basketballs. Not only, not only off the passes we just saw there, flooding the passing lane, but also off the dribble. He gets up into your comfort zone and doesn't allow you to really get a chance to peruse and look and survey and see what you can do. I would just guess as there's Jackson Emery's numbers, he is like most of the BYU players at some point in their uh, growth, they, they serve an LDS mission. Jackson Emery is just back from Mexico. The two years he played his freshman year at BYU, then did the two-year mission in Mexico, and has been back about eight months. And these guys are family men. A lot of them married, got oh. kids, you know, like 20, 21-year-old sophomores. But there's Emery also just making a pest of himself right there against James Harden. But you know, the counter to that, which is often talked about when BYU's references about the age of their players, the counter is that when you're on a mission, you know, you're not balling every day. Yeah. Pendergram gets a nice little bounce, and Jeff Pendergram gets ASU on the board. Uh, until BYU offers some help inside to Chris Miles, their defensive player going against Jeff Pendergram, I would really go at that matchup if I were Herb Sendek and, and allow Pendergram to at least have the quick start. Ooh, this, there's another guy. That, I think this is the guy that kind of floats under the radar. Jonathan Tavernari is a junior out of Brazil. And, man, this guy can score. He's 17-5 a game. Yeah, you know, and, and that's that's nothing to, 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 to slouch at. And, and his three-point percentage is 33%, but that's because he's got this range where he'll pop from 25. They say when he gets to around 21-22, it goes up exponentially. Pendergraft screening for Derek Glasser. Now gets it. And little body in the back. Chris Miles of BYU to pick up the first foul. Again, this is uncharted territory, a new territory for Jeff Pittograph here early in the season. He has just seen nothing but a steady diet of, of collapsing double-team defenses, defenses kind of sagging everything into the paint. Travel or oh, five seconds. Yep. Yeah. Five. And you also got to hold that pivot foot when you're inbound in the basketball. And again, good job of contesting the inbounds play by BYU, not just conceding. We saw that with Gonzaga last week where they were every inbounds play underneath. They defended man to man aggressively. And for that call for traveling on the baseline. First three or four minutes, the feeling out portion of the basketball game. And there's for Dett gonna come back down, kind of jumped in here to make the pass, came down before he delivered the basketball. James Harden. Harden got a pep talk from Amari Stoudemire after their game Sunday in Phoenix. He and Stoudemire developed a little friendship here in Phoenix. Missed shot, and Glasser trying to hustle down, but the ball does clip the sideline. Well, you can see the, the defensive approach of BYU right away. They're going to keep a man in Kuksik's face the entire time. They saw what happened with IUPUI last week. And then rely on Jackson Emery's foot speed and an aggressive defense on the outside against James Harden and give up the one-on-one -on -one move to Jeff Pinnegraff. Good kick out by Miles. Well, the very thing we talked about in the first game with Louisville Samuels, look at that kick out pass. Yeah, and again, as Rick Pitino talked about, tomorrow Samuels will be a better scorer when he becomes a better passer. That's what you've got to do. Double team right away, somebody's got to be open, get rid of the basketball. And it was Jackson Emery that made the pass pay off. Now, ASU played uphill the entire game last Sunday. That's an exhausting thing. And you know Rick said that doesn't want to do that again today. And this team's a lot better. BYU. Pendergrass has both Arizona State buckets. And look at how quick BYU got that ball up and in their offense in three seconds. Yeah. That's the, is that part of speeding it up? That's in part. They work on that in practice. They, they put the, the clock at nine in their fast break drill. They've got to get a shot off at nine seconds. Woo. Jackson Emery nails this three, and BYU's got the early lead. first time I took five-hour energy, I didn't feel bad afterwards. You know, usually you take energy drink and along the next three hours at some point, you just hit the wall. 
and I never hit that wall. It just was a natural energy that stuck with me for a while, five hours or so. One of my friends on the team, a guy I'm with a lot, he uses it and he likes it. You know, he calls me, make sure I have two when I come in the morning, because he always needs one. I say, well, go buy your own, but I'm kind of like the five-hour designated driver. <laughs> five-hour energy, I use it, I love it. like the med school scouts are out early today. There are over 380,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of them will be going pro in something other than sports. To learn more, go to NCAA.org. There are 380,000 NCAA student athletes. And most of us and most of will, us go, will pro. go pro in something, something other than, other than, sports. than sports. In something other than sports. To learn more, go to NCAA.org. Hi, I'm Tommy Heitzel, and you're watching Comcast Sportsnet. I think we say safe to say last year was the year of the freshman in the Pac-10, and James Harden. Maybe a little overlooked, overshadowed, but this could be the year of the sophomore in the Pac-10. He leads the pack. Let's get to know the young man from Artesia High School in Los Angeles. For every game, takes a nap, which I think we all do. Uh, what bothers him, <laughs> losing, I understand that. Lil Wayne's favorite musician, and then Kobe Bryant being the L.A. guy, loves him some Lakers. I got to add one to that. I'm laughing yesterday. I saw it earlier this year, and then I saw it yesterday when he came in to visit with us. His favorite hat? Montreal Expos. I laughed. I said, I've never in my life seen a player in another sport where a Montreal wow. Expos, he says, I love it. I just love the logo. Yeah. Somebody gave it to him. I said, you know they don't exist anymore. He said, yeah, somebody told me. <laughs> <laughs> Jared Glasser, after the turnover, can't finish, and it's out. Let's see, Bobby McCroy, the lead official, said he was unsighted. Ask for help. Ball comes back to ASU. Got to question that decision by Derek Glasser. You got a two-on-one here in Ty Abbott. Now, the defender did a nice job kind of jabbing and keeping him off balance and playing a little cat-and-mouse game. But you got to find a way to get a, a higher-quality shot when you've got a two-on-one situation like that. Turn. Chris Miles rebounds BYU. Lamont Morgan off the bench. And easy. He'll even speed the game up more for them. Yeah, they will surprise ASU came out in a zone defense that last possession. Now they get back to their man to man. Jackson Emery spies James Hart, gets right to him. Jimmer Fredette out right now for BYU. And uh, Herb Sendak, who did not use his bench very much last Sunday. The only two men he used come in right away, Jamel McMillan and Jaron Ship. He only played seven men in an overtime game, and those two, the two subs barely played. And, and Jamel McMillan, uh, he comes in out of O'Day High School in Seattle, the son of uh, Portland Trailblazer coach Nate McMillan. But he's, he's got the foot speed to stay in front of Lamont Morgan, who's, who's mission, if he decides to accept it, is to push, push, and more push up the floor. Call that on Arizona State. What's going on, McMillan? First foul on ASU. Don't make that second foul. When you look at BYU defensively, Ted, I mean, the word that comes to mind for me is bothersome. I mean, they're, they're, not, they're not overplaying and trying to gamble and get a lot of steals, but they're just always there, just constantly up in your face. Just got through watching the. He's up. It's going to be a foul on the route there. He got through watching the college football season where the Big 12 this year and all these great quarterbacks and all these teams that scored a ton of points. And Texas Tech was the team that was putting up, you know, 50, 60 points. Right. And, you know, a couple of games, though, they showed they could play some defense when they had to as well. And BYU strikes me as that kind of team. Yeah, they're, they're a balanced team. And, you know, the fact that they're averaging 82 points a game, you're thinking maybe it's a little bit one dimensional, but they're not. You don't win that you win as much as they have the last couple of years and not be a solid, sound fundamentally sound defensive basketball team. Oh, oh, oh. 
Harden is a total clear out. He just pops right over Emery. Long rebound, nice touch pass there. Jaron Ship to Ty Abbott. I have a struggle with his, his three-point ball early in the season, just 25%. But again, he's one of those guys who's a much better shooter than the numbers indicate. Sophomore late signee on to Arizona State last year, which had an extraordinary amount of basketball played by freshmen. The best part, as Al McGuire said, Gun sophomores. Foul off BYU. Gavin McGregor is in the game. He's replaced Chris Miles as the Cougar center. And once again, I mean, whether it's, it's Chris Miles or James Anderson or Gavin McGregor, I think you, you, you keep trying to go inside and allow Spinnegraff, who's at the high post, but now he's got a little pin down post up action with uh, James Harden on the right side of the court. It's recognized. That's the first on Kamard. One thing Arizona State does, though, they'll, they'll pretty much test your ability to play defense for 30 seconds. Yeah, they're very patient. They run their offense. They've got a, a lot of different tweaks off their motion offense. A lot of splits uh, in the low post, high post splits, weak side post splits. Ship denied in the lane. BYU back. They move quick and a nice play. Hart on back in transition D. Hart. What a tough shot. Tough shot under extreme defensive duress by James Hart. Great body control going to his right. Seven straight points for ASU, and now the fouls. Kamara made a baseline move. Jared Ship of the Sun Devils bumps him. And the, the poor decision by L Lamont Morgan comes up uh, empty. Uh, he tries to get it down the middle, and James Harden once again going to his right. I mean, he did about two or three different moves in the air to get freed up for that delivery. But that's the kind of talent that James Harden, Artesia High School State Champion in Los Angeles, Saw them play against Modern Day. Modern Day had the Weir Twins who were going to North Carolina. Andy Brown, a great 6'9", big guy. Well, here, this guy got a nice shooting he, touch, he, doesn't he? Talking about a quick trigger. Ooh, yes. And, 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 and that time, you know, he, he kind of elevated on the jump shot, but, but normally when he shoots a longer jumper, the three-point shot, more of a set shot, which allows that, that unlimited range. But the closer he gets to the basket, the more his efficiency picks up. It, it, it sounds routine and, 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 and pretty, pretty obvious, but I mean, it picks up dramatically. Cook six. Lost the ball second time for him. Kavard in transition. Avenari. If Arizona State tries to play at this pace, or do they slow it up? No, we've got a foul in transition. Who was that, Kamar? Wow, that's a transition foul. And Kamar is visibly upset, and that's going to get him to the bench. That's yeah. two quick fouls. Away from the basketball. There's Kamar. I mean, he, yeah, well, I mean, it was a little bit of a grab at the very tail end, but I'm just not sure how much it impacted that last possession by Arizona State. Harden with an air ball. Eric Botang in the game. He did not play at all last Sunday. And he kicks it out of Jamel McMillan buries the three. Quick three back. Emery missing. You see with BYU trying here, Mark, to speed it up. Speed up, and then they will run their, 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 their fast break. Just, just, just speed to the three-point line. Clear out, and Botang goes right by BYU's McGregor. And that's going to work Botang. You know, you got some offense as a post player. You're going to be effective in this game the way BYU is approaching it defensively. There's absolutely no help on the inside on post feet. And the ASU did a nice job there. They stayed wide. Stay wide. Make them defend the three-point line. Open things up even more. Jimmer Fredette back for BYU. A little spin move in the right. Draws a foul, but ASU going to the bench here and getting production. Botang the rebound, and Jamel McMillan buries the three. Ten elite universities stretching across four western states. 
is steeped in the values of academic excellence, driven by the mission of being the nation's premier athletic conference. The destination for student athletes competing at the highest level. The Pac-10, the Conference of Champions. Sportsnet has you covered all season long. These guys are great players. They're going to be Hall of Famers. Celtics pregame live, 30 minutes before every game. Only on Comcast Sportsnet, network of champions. This is where the champions play. The network of the truth. Every heart stop and slam a minute. Comcast Sportsnet, network of champions. In the paint in downtown. Comcast Sportsnet, the network of champions. All season long. And all in HD. Where else would the NBA champions play? Game time. What a play! Comcast Sportsnet, the network of champions. There's a reason the Celtics play here. Comcast Sportsnet. Comcast Sportsnet. The network of big game. <laughs> Arizona State up three on BYU. First half here in Glendale, Arizona. And we're coming up to the greatest week in college football. And you'll see it all on Fox. It begins on New Year's Day. This barrage of spectacular bowl games. The Tostitas Fiesta Bowl played right here in this stadium. And finally, the FedEx PCS National Championship game all on Fox in high definition. Arizona State on that run. Last year, they won 20. And they became only the second team in the 30-year history of the Pac-10 to go from 20 losses in one season to 20 wins the next. See the uh, difference that a year makes Arizona at the top of the pack in terms of turnaround in one year. Herb Sundek, I mean, he's been patient in building this program, and these guys have understood that. I think the first year that he was as a coach, uh, they played Iowa. They had a great win there last year against Xavier and John Miller's fine team. They got a great win at home against Xavier. Just kind of building the confidence of this team and program slowly. BYU out of the timeout as they oftentimes do go from man to man defense to 2 3 zone. Nice drive, Ty Abbott. Boteng. Oh, second try, and then finally Jonathan Taberneri is fouled. BYU's Taberneri got the rebound. Ty Abbott's whistled for aggressive reach in. Boateng, nice job on the offensive glass, but he faded away on the putback attempt when he didn't have to. Right there, going to battle for the rebound and then step and just fade and instead of attacking aggressively, just going through the body of the defensive player from Brigham Young inside. He's too big of a body, Eric Boateng, to shoot fadeaway shots three feet away from the basket. And now uh, Hertzendek's gone back to Pendergraf and Glasser off the bench. Tavernari missing BYU. James Harden looking to push. And that was one of those jumpers by Tavernari that was about two or three feet beyond the three-point line. That's short as well from Abbott. And here comes BYU. Oh, James Harden saw that all the way. Going right at the big man, steps right around him. Well, for a big guy, you got James Harden coming at you full speed with his ability to change directions at full speed. It's one of your worst nightmares. Harden has four shots already. Marcus only one behind last Sunday. <laughs> He's coming out aggressive. And, and then the steals. Last year's Pac-10 steals leader. Nari made his first few. Now has missed the last few. Gonna, you know, the 33% three-point shooter, which would make you believe he's not that good of a shooter, but it's all about oh, distance. Nice yeah. point. Pendergraft had a smaller man on him and just took him. And uh, Dave Rose, not happy with that, takes a BYU time. Jeff Pendergraft, who just finished his final exams and is now an ASU graduate. And he's going to get his degree in economics when the scores are posted. And he'll be a enrolled in school as a grad student. Well, well, well watch what Jeff Pendergraft catches about right here. Right here, you know, you're going to see how spread the court is for Arizona State. And they do a great job now with the big guy being defended one-on-one -on -one inside. 
You're going to see them spread the floor and allow Jeff Pendergraf to operate and use his offensive skills. And that's Jeff's mom, very proud of that son, college graduate, first college graduate in his family. There, oh, I see. I didn't even realize that ceremony was.